In this lecture, we are briefly going to understand what is a controller in NestJS and what is its use. And then we are also going to create a couple of controllers in this lecture. So let's first understand what is a controller in NestJS. Controllers in NestJS are responsible for handling incoming HTTP requests and returning appropriate responses. Basically, they act as a bridge between the client and the internal logic of your NestJS application. The client can be your browser or the Postman app or anything like that. So whenever you make a request from a client, the client expects a response. So the request which you sent from the client, that will be handled by a controller in NestJS application. And it is responsible for creating the response and sending it back to the client. That's the simple job of a controller in NestJS. For example, let's say from the client, we are sending a GET request to this URL. Now, if you see in this URL, after the root URL, we are also specifying this user route parameter. So this user is the resource here. Till port number 3000 is the root URL. After that, we are trying to access the user resource. Now, to handle this request, we will have a controller called user controller. And inside this user controller, we will have logic to handle any type of request. We will have a logic to handle get request, post request, put request, patch request, delete request, and so on for this URL. So when we are sending a get request to this URL, this user controller will have a method which will handle the get request on that URL. So this is what the use of controller is. It defines some methods to handle different types of requests and then it creates a response for that request and send it back to the client. All right, so I hope now you have a brief understanding of what is a controller and what do we use it for. Now let's go ahead and let's create our very first controller. So let's go to VS Code and here let's go to the source folder and currently we have two modules, two user defined modules, this tweet module and this users module. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a controller which I'll associate with this users module. For that inside this users folder I'm going to create a new file and let's call this file users.controller.ts. So this file is going to contain a controller and that's why in the file name it is a convention to specify this controller so this will simply tell the developers that this file is containing a controller it is containing a users controller just like how this file will tell the developers that this file is containing a module okay so this is just a convention it is not required but when you specify controller in the file name it will be easier for developers to understand that that file is containing a controller. Now, just like a module, a controller is nothing but a TypeScript class. So here I'm going to create a TypeScript class. I'm going to call it as users controller. Okay. And since I want to use this users controller class outside of this user controller.ts file, I'll also export it. Now, this users controller class, it is a simple TypeScript class. In order to make it a controller, all we have to do is we have to decorate it with at controller decorator. Okay, so when we create a module, we decorate the module class with at module decorator. In the same way, when we want to create a controller, we decorate the class with at controller decorator. And to use this at controller decorator, we also need to import it from nest.js slash common library. So I'll simply click here and it will automatically import that controller from that library and then we can use it. Okay, let me save this file. Now, if I open this appcontroller.ts file, there also you will see that we have a class called appcontroller decorated with at controller decorator. Now, this controller, this app controller, it is responsible for handling any type of request which is coming to the root URL. For example, this controller will handle any get request which we are making to the root URL. It will also handle any post request which we are making to the root URL. Okay, now how does this app controller know that it has to handle the requests coming to the root URL? Well, to this controller, we can also specify the 
URL path for which it needs to handle the request. Since we are not specifying any path here, any name here, that means this controller is going to handle any request which is coming to the root URL. But if you go to browser and there in the URL, if I type slash users after the root URL, in that case, this request will not be handled by this app controller because here this app controller is only going to handle the requests for root URLs okay because here we are not specifying any path for this controller but if we want to handle request for root URL slash users I want any type of request get request post request put request delete request any type of request which we are making to this URL to this root URL slash users I want all those requests to be handled by this users controller and for that to this controller I am going to specify a string value a name and I'll pass users here so this simply means that any request which will come to this URL root URL slash users that will be handled by this users controller okay so any request whether it is get post put delete any request which will come to this url that will be handled by this users controller and that's what this users mean so when we specify users here it is going to check if there is users after the root url okay so if there is this users after the root url then any type of request which we are making to this URL that will be handled by this users controller I hope this is clear now here we have created the controller this users controller but in order to handle different types of requests inside this users controller we also need to specify the action methods decorated with appropriate routing decorators but we are not going to do that in this lecture we will do it in our next lecture here we have simply created this users controller now Nest.js does not know about this users controller yet because Nest.js has no way of knowing that in this project we also have a users controller. So we also need to make Nest.js aware about this users controller. Now how can we do that? First of all let me save this file and if I go to appmodule.ts file there you will see that Nest.js knows about this user module because we are importing this user module inside this app module.ts file so nest.js knows about the app module because we are bootstrapping it in the main.ts file and from there it will come to know about this user module and actually what I'll do is I'll name this class as users module and not user module okay and let's go ahead and let's change it here as well so it should be users module and here also it should be users module all right so nest.js knows about this users module now we want to associate this users controller to this users module and when we associate this users controller to this users module since nest.js knows about this users module it will also come to know about this users controller and how can we associate this users controller to this user module well to this metadata object which we are passing to this module decorator there we can specify a property called controllers and this property is going to take an array and inside that array we can specify all the controllers which we want to associate to this users module here I only want to associate the users controller so I'll go ahead and I will specify it here and in order to use this users controller we also need to import it from user controller.ts file so when I click here it will automatically write that import statement so we are importing this users controller from this file and then we are specifying it inside this array so now we have associated this users controller to this users module with this if I save the changes if we go to command prompt the application has been compiled there is zero errors you can see users module dependencies are initialized and you can also see user controller is initialized okay so this is how we can create a controller manually but we can also create a controller using nest.js CLI and that also I'm going to show you in this lecture so just like this 
users module we also have this tweet module and for that tweet module also i want to create a controller and i want to associate that controller to this tweet module so let's go ahead and let's create a new controller let's create a tweet controller and we want to associate it with tweet module.ts so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use nest.js cli and for that we will type nest here space and we want to generate a controller so i can type generate or in short i can also type g then we want to generate a controller so we'll specify that and after that let's specify a name for the controller so here the controller file name should be tweet.controller.ts so i'm simply going to specify the controller name as tweet okay if i press enter you will see that there are three changes which has happened first of all inside the tweet folder a tweet.controller.ts file has been created you can see that here the second change is it has also created a spec.ts file for that controller and inside this spec.ts file we can write the testing logic for that controller if you want to write some unit tests to test that controller this tweet controller we can write that logic inside this spec.ts file and then it has also updated the tweet module.ts now what it has done in the tweet module.ts you will see that it has added this controllers property and there inside that array it has associated that tweet controller to this controllers property so as you can see when we use nest.js cli all the hard work which we do manually by creating a file creating a class associating that controller class to the module class all that is taken away from us okay so using nest.js cli we don't have to do anything we just have to run that command and all the necessary things will be taken care by the nest.js cli anyway this is how you can create a controller using nest.js cli so here what it has done is it created this tweet controller.ts file inside that it created this tweet controller class it decorated it with controller decorator and then it also specifies the path here so now here this controller will be called whenever the user tries to make a request to root url slash tweets or tweet let's check that okay so tweet okay so whenever a user tries to make a request to this url where after the root url it finds this tweet then this controller is responsible for handling those requests that request can be of any type it can be a get request post request put request delete request so any type of request which is going to come to this url that should be handled by this tweet controller okay so in this lecture we learned what is a controller what is its use and how to create a controller manually as well as using nest.js cli now inside these controllers we have not added any action methods we have not added any method for handling different types of requests that we are going to do in our next lecture